This is a very hard review to complete without going into a massive rant because Corsair, you disappointed me heavily with this one. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety at Wookie Triple XL. And this is a very tough review for me because it's also something that I didn't actually want to put onto the channel. I've got an ethos of if the product is like almost, I don't want to say unreviewable, but if it's the performance isn't clearly what it should be, I'd rather just give direct feedback to the manufacturers and suggest something else to you. Like for instance, when I do bias guides and stuff, you really guys really should pay attention to those because I give you the best, you know, advice based on the best performance results that I've received from different products. But anyway, this H115i, it struck me as a pretty cool product. A new Capelix thing. I love H100s. I've been working with H100s for years. I realized like the first time I built one was probably over seven years ago. And the H100, H100i, the 240, like this H100 RGB that I have over here have been really good staples for me. The price versus performance, especially from like this guy, for instance, when I got it, it was 1,700 Rand. It was one of the better priced uh, 240 mil radiators and it still holds up even compared to red rads like a castle which is better but costs more if you look at price versus performance they've always been really competitive build quality and stuff from corsair on their water coolers has been some of the best their pump lifetime as well five year warranty they give because those pumps just don't die they're actually really really well built and fantastic quality all the right things so when they said hey there's a new cooler i was like cool i'm excited bring it over um yeah and then as I started to use it, Corsair has made some pretty critical errors over here. So let's start off with what you get in the box. Well, obviously you get these two 140 fans. They have rubberized corners all around, really nicely done there on. No rattle, anything like that. Nice little AF Elite on the side as well, so you know which series and stuff it came from. Standard 280mm radiator with a standard 27mm thickness. You've got two high inlet points, but that's also quite natural for the H100s and stuff. And, and for the series in general, is those inlet points are generally quite high on the radiator. The result of that is that, honestly, it generally will be better on a top mount type of setup or if it is going to be front mounted like this that you invert it so the inlets are then at the bottom and so that the air can sit at the high point over here and not get sucked back up through the pump and decrease the lifetime of your product equally if it's mounted up top so if it's sitting like that then the chances for it bringing in water air and stuff into the pump uh, are just significantly reduced and it's just going to make sure that this thing lasts that much longer the pump is really, really nice though. I love the diffusing on it. It's very Corsair in its look and feel. It doesn't feel like anybody else's product, which is fantastic. Little removable 3D printable mirror shield as well on it. So it's got some built-in customization. And for a cooler of this price, it's nice to see that that is included and that you can just orientate the pump and stuff the way that it suits your build. And then you can rotate the face on it, which I think is becoming a default in the price segment. But it, obviously, it's nice that it's there. Now, the way that this is all connected up is through a daisy chain system, and this is where some of the cracks start to show. While you do have a four pin uh, header on the fans to give you even better control over the RPM and stuff, it then daisy chains into a USB type C connector, which goes in the side over here. And then that needs to be connected to the motherboard on another connector at the back. So you have to then use a USB connector to get everything working. The RGB as well is not um, hard addressable. It's just like a straight normal RGB system. So you have to use IQ if you want to use the addressable features on the header, on the, on the pump at least. Why? Very annoying. Similarly, any performance metric or any performance changes you want, you once again have to use the IQ software. So I have to install a 3.7 gig program just to control my RGB and my performance of my cooler. Not, not desirable at all. Compared to the H100, which I just connect straight in and control everything from my already comprehensive motherboard softwares, whether using MSI Center or Asus AR Suite, it's going to be a lot more convenient because you can control all of your case fans and all of the other RGB from one central location instead of having to go into this and change 
just this. There are other, there is a way that you can connect the motherboard as well. So anything that is then connected to the motherboard does pass through, but it's all, you're being forced into ISQ to do any sort of linked customization. It's not ideal. I don't like it at all. Equally, this is very frustrating is having to do all of your profiling and stuff inside of this and then assign it for each fan and for the pump as well. And of course, the pump is going to be different to the fans and stuff. Um, and the base RPM, that it, it basically fluctuates between two and 3,000 RPM, um, which is 3,000 RPM is on the higher end uh, for water coolers these days. But now looking at performance and having controlled all of that, you can see it makes little to no difference. Equally, the performance, especially on the averages, is worse than an air cooler. It's worse than the Deepcool AK400. So basically, 600 Rand every day tower cooler on a 12600K or Corsair's Elite 280 mil is going to give worse performance? But, and not by a small margin either. It's like by 15 degrees on 80 degrees worth of temperature. So this is going to be like 20% worse than a budget air cooler from Deepcool, which just leaves it massively uncompetitive. Whereas this guy slotted in right between the LE500 and the LS520, which is exactly where its price point slots in. So price per performance on the H100i, which is what I'm used to, is exactly on point. And usually you do pay a little bit of Corsair tax for premium stuff, but then the performance makes up for that and you usually get some of the best coolers and stuff out there because of that. It's not, just not so in this generation. Any fan curve you put at it, you can put it in extreme mode on the pump, you can leave it in the quiet mode, the only difference it's going to make is like three to four degrees. And that's not what you want to see on a cooler that costs two and a half grand or more. And the performance that I got out of this, even with the RAM being at a faster setting, is worse than it was with the H100 on a 10 minute test. And I've tested and I've retested and I've retested and the result always comes out like this. There's not, there's, I've tried, I've literally done everything I can. I've reseated this thing several times. I've used different brackets to see if it was the height, if the cooler wasn't making proper contact. And I know it wasn't that eventually, because if I click stop over here, it's been going for about two minutes, you'll see that temperature immediately goes to 37 degrees. So it was at 91 and within a second, it's already back down to like room temperature at like 36 degrees C. So there's no problem with contact or anything like that. It's just the way that this cooler functions. It's just not good. It's just not up to scratch. And so bullet point of the presentation is, Corsair, please go back to the drawing board. Do this again. This is perfect. This is really good. This is some of the best coolers that I've ever used. I've suggested them for builds and builds and builds and never regretted it. This, how could I possibly suggest it to someone? when I know what the performance results are, when I know how cumbersome and difficult it is to use, when I know that I'm being forced into another really large, really system resource intensive application like IQ. These are not the things I wanna see. If, if this would be good in a full Corsair build where everything is functioning through IQ, sure. Outside of that, if anybody else wants to do easy integration with it, you guys have literally made it as hard as humanly possible to do. So please, to redirect, go off of this path, I beg you, because this is not the way to do things. Go back to this. This is perfect. This is good. That is all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe. And I will see you on the flip side.